What's up, Mavletic lovers and listeners, and welcome back to a new episode of Maverick Postgame. We've got another full show for you today as Mesa football plays their home opener. And the men's soccer win streak is broken. But there was an amazing win from our women's soccer. And the women's volleyball team has a dominating three-set sweep. All of that and so much more as we move ahead into this recap-packed episode of Maverick Postgame. So with that being said, I'm your host, Grace Metcalf. And I'm Stone Quinn. Let's get into all the game-breaking stats, off-the-wall wins, heartbreaking losses, and in-depth analysis of our CMU Athletics. Roll it! Hello everyone, once again I am Stone Quinn and I am Grace Metcalf. Let's hop right in and take a look at all the Mavtastic action that took place this week here at CMU. In their home opener, the Colorado Mesa football team had an unfortunate loss to South Dakota Mines last Saturday. Hard Rockers outscored the Mavericks 17-7 in the fourth quarter en route to the 31-17 victory on the road to push their season record to 2-1 and 1-0 in RMAC action. Colorado Mesa drops to 1-1 on the season and 0-1 in the conference. The Mavericks jumped out to a 10-0 lead after Lucas Ruz Diaz connected on a 46-yard field goal with 7 minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Midway through the second quarter, Karst Hunter hooked up with Keenan Brown on a 63-yard touchdown pass. On the play, Brown nearly carried two Hard Rocker defenders the final 15 yards into the end zone. South Dakota Mines came back with 24 unanswered points from midway through the second quarter, all the way to 9 minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Jacob Whitmer stopped the South Dakota Mines run with a nifty 23-yard touchdown catch from Hunter. Whitmer barely got his toes in on the Hard Rocker side for the end zone for the score to make it 24-17. South Dakota Mines added a touchdown to regain the 14-point advantage at 31-17. Hunter finished the game 15-33 for 33 for 282 yards and two touchdowns, while his favorite target, Brown, had three catches for 116 yards and the score. Noah Saria finished with four catches for 68 yards. As a team, the Mavericks did well, however. However, they were not successful in statistics compared to the Hard Rockers. The Mavs obtained 347 total yards to the Hard Rockers 460. The Hard Rockers also managed to have possession of the ball longer than the Mavs. The Mavs are now 0-1 on the season as they head to Black Hill State for their next game this Saturday. This past Sunday, the Colorado Mesa men's soccer had a five-game win streak snapped after a loss to CSU Pueblo with a score of 2-1. Fernando Morales opened the score, scoring with a penalty kick goal, but CSU Pueblo responded with two quick strikes late in the first half, and the Thunder Wolves held the lead throughout the final 45 minutes. The Mavs' first and best chance came just shy of the half-hour mark when a CMU cross came into the box and Pueblo goalkeeper Niles Roth left his net to try to grab it, but the ball deflected away from the redshirt freshman mid midfielder Joa Pedro Moreas found the ball at the feet and took a shot on the goal. But it was cleared off the line by CSU Pueblo defender. When the Moreas and both raced towards the ball, Moreas got there first before Roth brought him down inside the box, leading to the Mavs' third penalty kick of the last two games. Morales stepped up to take the kick and beat the keeper with a well-placed strike into the left-hand side netting. It was Mor Morales' third goal of the season in just five games, the last two of which came from the penalty spot. The Thunder Wolves immediately responded with goals to tie and take the lead. However, the Thunder Wolves then scored again just 90 seconds before halftime. The Mavs weren't able to do much offensively in the second half, attempting just three shots with a 70th minute effort by David Peters, the only one that went on target, CSU Pueblo played a physical brand of soccer, collecting 16 fouls and six yellow cards, but it prevented the Mavericks from getting 
made many concrete offensive chances. As a team, the Mavericks fell short in most of the statistics against the Thunderwolves. However, the Mavs played a clean, a cleaner game by not collecting nearly as many fouls as the Thunderwolves with their 16 to R8. The Mavs also were able to have more saves on the goal than the Thunderwolves with R3 to their 1. The Colorado Mesa women's soccer team got back on track with a comfortable 6-0 victory over Black Hills State in the opening game of the RMAC season for both schools. Lila Deer got the party started in the sixth minute with a goal off an assist from center back KG Rapp. It was the second assist of the year for Rapp, who maintained her streak of playing in every minute of every game this season. The Mavericks continued playing direct football as yet another defender left back Stella Bollinder tallied an assist on CMU's second goal. Bollinder found redshirt sophomore Mira Hook in the 22nd minute uh, for her first goal of the season. Hook, a central midfielder fixture, has played the second most minutes of any Maverick this season behind Rapp. It would take until the 63rd minute for the Mavs to score again, but Black Hill State was unable to get anything going offensively in the meantime. Mavs goalkeeper Chloe Doughty only needed to make one save in 71 minutes of play. Savannah Harvey received her first game action of the year, completing the shutout by playing the final 19 minutes in net. She did not face a shot, Deary scored her second of the match and 10th of the season in the 63rd minute off an assist from Klasner. And from there, the floodgates opened. Deere tallied her second assist of the year less than a minute later, setting up Addie Randell for the redshirt sophomore second goal of the season. As a team, the Mavericks dominated in almost all statistics, obtaining more shots and shots on goal. Black Hills was able to have more saves than the Mavs because they only had one shot on the goal the Mavs had to save. The Mavs did manage to rank up more fouls than the Yellow Jackets. The Lady Mavs are now back to .5 at a 3-3-1 overall record. Last Saturday, the Colorado Mesa women's volleyball team had a three-set sweep against the New Mexico Highland Cowgirls. The Mavericks claimed their third straight victory by a 25-17, 25-21, 25-15 margin over the Cowgirls and improved to 8-3 overall and to 3-1 in Rocky, Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference matches. All eight wins have come in straight sets. Aaron Curl, Sierra Hunt, Sydney Leffler, and Savannah Spitzer all finished Saturday's victory with nine kills as the Mavericks hit 248 as a team. Ty Wedhorn also had seven kills as the Mavs dominated the Cowgirls, 44 to 24 in total kills during the match that lasted just one hour and 14 minutes. The Cowgirls never recovered as CMU led by at least three points throughout the rest of the frame. NMHU did get off to a good start in the second set and lead 9-5 before a 5-1 Mavericks run tied the set at 10. It was also tied at 11, 12, and 13 as the teams exchanged points before the Mavs took a 16-13 lead on an attack error. As a team, the Mavericks did a great job in overall statistics, getting a lot more kills than the Cowgirls and having a higher successful hitting percentage. It was close when it came to errors, 17-16 and attempts 109 to 105, but the Mavs managed to have more points and assists. Now that we have recapped some of the games, it's time to announce our Maverick of the Week. Our Maverick of the Week goes to Shannon Furren. Shannon won the Desert's Edge Triathlon, where she finished in 1 hour, 8 minutes, and 51.8 seconds, crossing the finish line. Shannon, who topped the women's 20 to 29 division, had the top bike time of 34 minutes and 44 seconds. Congratulations, Shannon, for your outstanding performance. You are Maverick of the Week. We are now at the end of our show, and it is time for our closing statements. My closing thought is on how I hope that the football team can get back into their winning groove we saw last year, especially since their next home game is against Western, which is supposed to be a tough game. I'd love to see them win that game and get lots of amazing highlights of it. I agree. Through 
Though it was a tough loss, I would like to really see the football team pull it together to achieve that win. My closing thoughts are not only on football, but just overall on other sports. We have, we have competing, there's already been lots of wins and titles and high expectations from our athletics. Take a look at the swim team, for example. The men and women swimming were unanimously predicted to defend their long-standing RMAC titles. It's very exciting. It is very exciting. And I also can't wait to see more. Now that we have wrapped up all the action from this week and given our closing thoughts, it is time to close the show. Thank you everyone so much for joining us this week on Maverick Postgame. I've been your host, Grace Metcalf. And I've been Stone Quinn. Be sure to go check out our channel 62.2 for more games and updates. We'll catch you next week on an all new recap packed episode of Maverick Postgame. Stay safe Mavs, study hard, go to a game or two, and of course, have yourselves a Mace Amazing Day.